Hi, and welcome to this video where we will show you all the new exciting stuff in Google Play Services 4.3. If you're new to Google Play Services, you have come to the right place because Google Play Services rocks. For you as a developer, this is great news because you can get your hands on all the latest blazing hot stuff we develop here at Google and incorporate into your apps. Let's look at the highlights of this version. First of all, we'll show you a brand new address API. Then we'll go through some exciting new features of the Google Play game services. We'll also cover the Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager APIs, which are also brand new to the Google Play services family. And we'll round it off this time by showing you new stuff in the Google Drive Android API. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, we got a new API. Let's welcome the Address API with a round of applause. Get back to work. Yes, sir. How many of you have tried to buy something on the internet from your smartphone and then come to the part where you need to fill out the delivery address? Ah, nightmare experience. Big fingers on small keys. But of course, if you want to ship to your current location, then you can use the location API to fill out the address, which makes things easier. But what if you're at work and want to ship it to your home? That's exactly when the address API comes to the rescue. With the address API, your app can present a user interface, which displays all addresses registered by the user. The user can then select an address, such as John Smith in the example on the picture, and voila! The address will be made available to the awesome Bike Store app to complete the purchase. There is no more messing around with thumbs on small keys. Isn't that great? Shopping on your smartphone just became a walk in the park thanks to Google Play services. Now over to Google Play game services. Mobile gaming is bigger than ever and we're continuing to pack new features into this API. With this release, we've introduced Game Gifts, which allows players to send virtual in-game requests to anyone in their Google Plus circles or through player search. A player can now send a wish request to ask another player for an in-game benefit or item. And another player can send a gift request to give an item or benefit or something, making both players happy in the end. This feature complements the multiplayer functionality released earlier and will enhance the social engagement between players in your games. An example of using gifts is to request more lies from your friend in case the last round of playing did not go so well. Psst, this little video used the liquid fun physics engine. You should so much check it out. So great stuff from the Google Play services. Be sure to use them all in your game. Let's now move over to the Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager APIs. And ladies and gentlemen, that's right. These are all new APIs. Let's welcome the Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager APIs with a round of applause. Get back to work. Yes, sir. So these APIs have actually existed as standalone APIs, but have now been fully integrated into the Google Play Services API family. This is great since this reduces the memory footprint of your app and these APIs become accessible side by side with all the other ones ready for you to use to create that shiny app. So let's look at what these APIs contain. We'll start off with the Google Tag Manager, which lets you use tags in your apps instead of hard coding values. These tags are then substituted for values that you have stored in the Tag Manager at runtime. This can, for example, be used to manage background colors of your app, game settings, and localization settings. Since the values of the tags are stored in the Tag Manager, this eliminates the need to push your entire app from Google Play again. You can simply change the value of the tag in the Google Tag Manager. That brings us over to the Google Analytics API. And if you haven't used Google Analytics before, I strongly encourage you to take it for a test ride. Google Analytics allows you to get detailed statistics on how your app is being used by your users. For example, what functionality of your app is being used the most, or which activity triggers the users to convert from an advertisements app to a paid one. So that stuff can be pretty, pretty good to know. To get your users happy, but also to get your next month's paycheck. 
So be sure to check the Google Analytics API out because it can really provide lots of valuable information to you, which brings us to the Google Drive Android API. As you may know, the Google Drive Android API was officially released in the last version of Google Play services, and it's off to a flying start with a number of API enhancements. First off is pinning. You can now pin files that should be kept up to date locally. This ensures that the app can work with these files even when the user is offline. Then we have app folders, which allows your app to create files which are no longer visible to the user. For example, to store temporary files in a photo editor. This is the same function as the application data folder in the Google Drive API that have existed for a while. With this version, we also have change notifications, which makes it possible to register a callback and receive a notification when a file or folder is changed. This means that you no longer need to query a drive continuously to check if the data has changed. Just put a change notification on it and the API will call you when it happens. And then we've also made a number of enhancements to metadata information, which is something you can never get enough of. Well, to satisfy that craving you may have for metadata, you should be happy to hear that we've added a bunch of new fields in this version. So that's it for this release of Google Play services. But stay tuned because we've got lots more coming up. Now it's your turn, so go out there and create great apps. And don't forget to tell us all about it.